Jesus, no. No way. No, Jesus, no. Holy shit. Is something about it? Is something about it? Is something about it? What it What's good with y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, you saw that intro clip, man. I don't even know what to say other than NXT always shows why they are the a show and they showed it this weekend on war games and they showed it also again at survivor series and i'm gonna give my thoughts and my opinions on both shows i got a chance to watch both shows i didn't get a chance to watch them when they were live i had to kind of catch them like early in the morning because i was busy so i was watching both shows like around two three o'clock in the morning and uh i was enjoying it i'm not gonna lie it was it was uh it was enjoyable it was definitely worth the watch for both shows but i'm gonna give my opinions and thoughts i'm not gonna go into every single match but i'm gonna go into just highlights of both shows and uh we're gonna have a discussion right now i'm recording this while raw is on have not even checked raw haven't seen anything that happened on raw i'll probably check it out after i record this and if there's anything noteworthy i'll probably make a video for it tomorrow so let's start with nxt war games uh first and foremost um before we get into that epic spot at the beginning of this video um i have a i have to give a shout out to the women of nxt man they showed up this was the women's like you know how wwe has women's first hell in a cell match women's first tlc match women's first war games match and they knocked it out of the park if you want me to be honest i like this match better than the men's not to say that the men's wasn't crazy and it was entertaining this one just had a better overall story being told in the ring and it was just entertaining man i, I don't i don't even know what to say it was it was just entertaining on both sides the heels and the faces you enjoyed what was being the type of destruction and carnage they were pretty much doing to each other just to sh for bragging rights you know what i'm saying to say we won our first women's war game match and i will say the most popular like one of the shocking what well, i wouldn't say it was shocking i think a lot of people expected uh dakota kai to turn heel i don't think they expected it that soon I, I a lot of people were speculating that she would probably turn heel um on like the next taping of nxt uh that's happening not next taping but the next episode of nxt pretty much the fallout episode from war games and survivor series people were kind of speculating that but the fact that she turned heel during the match when it was her time to go out there to help her teammates out and she attacked her best friend um tegan knox and i don't really know these wrestlers too well you feel me but that made me want to get more invested into their feud because that attack was brutal i haven't seen a heel turn brutal attack like that in a very long while it was brutal and it just kept going and she was actually getting genuine heel heat like people were actually booing her because she was destroying tegan knox and that's her friend supposedly kfa wise maybe behind the scenes too that's like one of her best friends so i am really interested to see what they do with her character man because they've just created a nice heel that was a nice heel turn and it created a different dynamic in the match because now it was on it was all on the shoulders of Rhea Ripley and Candice LeRae it was 2v4 you feel me how are they gonna win in my mind I'm like they're not gonna win I don't I don't see them winning this match and they pulled it off 
Rhea Ripley is the next person to take Shayna Baszler's title. I believe that she is hella over. She was over before. She's hella over now. Um, and the fact that she ended up, and it was such a nice way how they did this, this little transition towards the end of the match. Uh, Shayna Baszler has her in the care. Uh, I think it's pronounced Kirafuda Clutch. I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing the name. But I think it's Kirafuda Clutch. I'm sure I'm butchering it. But she had it in the in that submission hold. And uh, Rhea had some handcuffs. And she put applied the handcuffs on her so she couldn't apply the hold anymore. And basically hit her finishing move onto some steel chairs. Very brutal. And pinned the NXT Women's Champion. And got a massive pop. She was over as hell. She's the next person up, next woman up in line for that championship. And I honestly think you put the strap on her, man. Shayna Baszler has done her thing. She's beating everybody there is to beat. I think you put this on her. I think you put the strap on her. You maybe can get a, a, a couple more, another match, a quality match. But I think the next takeover, which I believe is in Oregon. If I, I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. But the next takeover is in Oregon next year in February. She needs to have a championship match and she needs to be the champ because she's over as hell. She's doing amazing things down there in the, for the women's division and just the women as a whole Io Shirai was a standout too that moon saw it off the top of the cage mm, delicious she she killed it as well man so I just the women showed out and they did their thing yeah, I liked it out of out of the uh two war game matches it was my favorite one so they killed it. Great way to start off the show. I believe there was the triple threat match um, to see who was going to be the number one contender. It was entertaining. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. Um, Pete Dunne ended up winning. Entertaining match to see who was going to be the number one contender for uh, the NXT title at uh, Survivor Series. Entertaining enough. Um, also, the Finn Balor and um, Matt Riddle match. Pretty good. Um I actually like that match better than a, a triple threat match. But uh, the right man won. Finn Balor won. Got the dub. He needed to keep that heel momentum going. So that was cool. But the meat and potatoes that you guys want to know how I feel. The men's war game match. Now, first and foremost, I expected nothing but a, a fantastic match. Any match that Undisputed Era is in, no matter who it is, all members of Undisputed Era, they know how to entertain, they know how to put on great matches, and this was just more or less the same what we've seen last year in the uh, last uh, War Games, they know how to put on great matches, and this was pretty much that, man, enjoyable from start to finish, one of the best moments of the night was that pop that Kevin Owens got when he was announced as a surprise guest when he came out and his music hit. That pop was amazing. Haven't seen a pop like that in a very long time. Crowd was loving it. I I even kind of marked out a little bit because I wasn't expecting that. And I like it because it makes sense because Undisputed did attack him on Monday Night Raw. So he kind of has a beef with him. Perfect partner for, for Team uh, Ciampa entertaining match it was just it was crazy man table spots everywhere keith lee dark horse on the match man the guy can go as big as he is the guy can move love watching his in-ring work fantastic but of course we got to talk about that sick spot that you saw at the beginning of this clip at the beginning of this video i don't know how adam cole is even moving Around. I don't know how he was going to even be able to wrestle the next night. This My man fell. It, it looked like at least 20 feet from the top of the cage through the table, bro. Just just ridiculous. Such a savage and nasty spot. I was literally like, holy, you know what, man, bro. It was so sick, man. So once that happened, I was like, this is a perfect way to end off a pay-per-view. I enjoyed it. For me, I'm going to give that pay-per-view, uh, I'll give it an 8 out of 10, man. It was a very good show. 
And it had a little bit of the lows, but for the most part, most of the matches, all the matches were pretty good. And it was only four matches, four matches. And you had a fantastic two and a half hours of great wrestling, great storytelling. Looking forward to seeing what happens this Wednesday for sure. Now, let's get into Survivor Series, man. Let's get it. Let's just knock this out the park real quick. NXT won the Survivor Series, like, matches, how it should have been. It should have been booked like that, and they won decisively. I believe it was four for NXT. Was it four or five? I believe it was four for NXT, two for SmackDown, one for Raw, I think. I could be wrong, but I just know NXT clearly was taking over, and I like how they booked that because that's what you want to do. You want to build these stars up to the main roster audience so people can be like yo who are these people let me check wednesday nights that's how you do it and they haven't been doing it for years they will build somebody up just to let them fall when they got to the main roster and i feel like that's been the detriment to a lot of nxt stars the past couple of years so the fact that they got their shine got the show out was dope once again women's match started off the main show i didn't watch the pre-show so i I really don't know what happened there but the women's match started off the main show and the right team won nxt uh rhea ripley was a once again standout people the crowd popped for her she's over what else is there to say i enjoyed that match it was it was kind of sloppy at times because you can there's a lot of women in there and i don't no disrespect but a lot of them or just glorified jobbers. There's some really great wrestlers that was on, like, in the ring. But a lot of them from the Raw and SmackDown side was just glorified jobbers at best. So, it was it was it's weird seeing these in-ring technicians from the women's side. And then also seeing jobbers pulling off, like, moves on these in-ring technicians that you wouldn't think happen wouldn't think would be believable so it was just too many women on like on just on all sides it, it kind of felt clustered and sloppy at times but for the most part enjoyable i think they do need a dollar back maybe a 3v3 situ 3v3 v3 situation or maybe raw and smackdown team up versus nxt women next year make it a little bit smaller and more concise because it kind of seemed all over the place but nxt got the dub uh you had the mid card championship uh titles on the line oh and i forgot to mention i this was actually my first time seeing the new intercontinental championship uh, belt because i didn't watch it when it was released so when i saw it i was like oh this that's how it looks it's it's an okay design i prefer the other belt me personally but it, it reminds me of something that uh like an nxt championship to be honest but i like the other belt because that other belt with the white strap definitely signified uh intercontinental champion and i i like the design of that one the old school design of the white belt but um the right person won once again Roderick Strong in a s- sneaky fashion in a smart fashion you know what I'm saying he picked up the victory after uh AJ Styles hit the uh phenomenal forearm on uh Nakamura and he threw AJ out the ring get your ass out the ring got the pin got the easy win bro I like it man that's that's smart so that that was pretty dope to see him get that dub um and the match I was actually looking forward to was Adam Cole versus Pete Dunne. To me, that was one of the top matches of the night. They killed it. They showed why NXT, and that was just like a small sample size. They showed why NXT is the, the A show. The crowd was eating it up once they started it, like really moving along. And they put on a fantastic match. I enjoyed that match. Uh, let's get into the Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. I, I've... I'm still an advocate of saying the match was booked too soon, but I enjoyed it for storytelling because you started to see Daniel Bryan go back to the Daniel Bryan that we remember when he was on the Yes Movement run, and he started going back to that during like the middle of the match because that was his motivation. It was like, oh, that was giving him strength, and it was cool to see the crowd just go into that like it never left. And it was an actually entertaining match. I enjoyed that match. 
they started to make you believe he had a chance. But ultimately, the right person won. The Fiend got the dub. So I'm not sure if they continue to shoot. Who knows? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But uh, I enjoyed that match. That was that was cool. I'm still not a big fan of the red lights. It's kind of distracting. I mean, after a while, you watch it, you get used to it. But it's still kind of distracting for me. But uh, it was it was very good match. It's safe to say Daniel Bryan is a face now. And the Yes Movement may come back full force. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, oh, side note. There has been rumors that Bray's pretty much going to hold the, the championship warm for none other than Roman Reigns himself. And I hope that's not the case. Apparently, this could be wrong. These are rumors. Anything's uh Anything can happen from now to WrestleMania, but apparently he's supposed to lose it to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and I think that would be colossally stupid. But it's also WWE, so I can see them doing that. But if they do that, they ruin The Fiend, they ruin Bray Wyatt, and they will destroy Roman Reigns once again because people will not like it. It will just be a rehash of what we was already hoping wouldn't happen again. So, hopefully that doesn't happen. Keep your fingers crossed, but I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, so, let's get into the men's um, match and uh, the men's Survivor Series match. That was pretty good. Not going to lie. It started off slow for me, but it was cool seeing people interact. Once again, like I said, uh, for the uh, NXT portion of things, Keith Lee, man, bro, he is the dark horse, man, for real, and he was really, like, he was the guy for this match, he was getting such a a loud chant, and they were chanting his name, they was also doing a little, oh, bask in his glory, I like that, bro, like, he was really over, and it was good for him to pin Seth Rollins I hope they turn Seth heel they need to do something he got booed so bad it is crazy how things have turned he got he was getting some Roman Reigns heat even though Roman was getting some heat too he was getting some nuclear heat boys did not want Seth involved in anything and it was dope that Keith Lee got to pin him ultimately Roman Reigns was going to get Ended up getting a dub. I really thought they were going to give it to Keith Lee. I think that would have been perfect if they would have gave it to him. But, you know, Vince loved him some Roman. So, Roman ended up getting the dub there. But, nevertheless, that finish was entertaining. And there was two false finishes that I thought it was three count. I like how they played that off on commentary. Had you on the edge of your seat. Now, the match that actually surprised me. Because, I, even though it was... It had a nice, interesting storyline leading up to it. It I expected it to be more or less a squash. And you already know what I'm talking about. Rey Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar. No holes barred. And I was expecting it to be a squash. And actually, it was turning out that way until Dominic got involved. And when he got involved, oh, the match just got so much more entertaining. And they made you believe they were going to win. They made you believe Ray was going to win. When he when Ray hit uh, Brock with the low blow, and then Dominic hit him with the low blow. And then my boy Dominic, man, hit him. Hit the father-son duo 619 combo. It was so lit. Then he goes up onto the top rope. Hits a nice, pretty nice uh, frog splash, man, on Brock Lesnar. Then Rey Mysterio hits one on Brock Lesnar as well. And they double pin him. Rey pins him. And Dominic gets on, like, on, on Rey's back to, like, double pin him. And then he pushes him off. He pushes both of them off. And that's... When I was like, uh, I think he's going to lose now. But it was, you. it made you believe he was going to win. And the crowd literally was like, yo, they were on the edge of their seats because they thought he had lost the championship. And they thought Ray had legit won. I thought he was about to win too, but ultimately won F5. And, uh, well, it wasn't one at five. He he suplexed uh, Dominic into another universe, and then uh, pretty much one at five took out uh, Rey Mysterio. One, two, three, boom! But it was dope. 
and it proves that uh, Ray, uh, not Ray, Brock is he's better with smaller opponents, man. He somehow finds a way to make it believable that they can actually win, and that's the whole purpose. So that was pretty cool. Don't know who else he feuds with at this point. We may not even see him to rest. We're probably not going to see him to uh, the Royal Rumble. So I don't know who he feuds with. We'll see what happens. And probably the most disappointing match of the night goes to the women's triple threat match between Shayna Baszler, Becky Lynch, and none other than Bailey herself. Very disappointing. Match was kind of dead. I think partially because the crowd had just expended damn near all their excitement and energy on the last match, which was the Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio match. They expended all their energy. They had nothing left. This this match had a very good build up, but execution wise, it didn't really pay off. Probably my least favorite match of the night, and that sucks because. You have three talented women wrestlers showcasing why they're the best, and it, it kind of didn't land for me. The crowd was kind of dead, and I, I just, at that point, I was like, all right, well, it's time to end the pay-per-view. Uh, it was a cool little segment. Of course, Shayna, she got the dub. I thought Becky was going to win this, but Shayna got the dub and solidified NXT being the superior brand. I believe they had five wins. I could be wrong. I think it's five or four. Comment down below. I'm not sure. But um, they, NXT ended up prevailing as the superior brand, which is the truth. Not even in kayfabe sense. This is legit the truth. Um, And then that's when Becky Lynch uh, ended up attacking Shayna Baszler, uh, putting her through the table. Uh, she got some booze. She got some booze, man. People love their NXT, man. And NXT was over in any match. Didn't matter who it was. All you heard was NXT, NXT chance. So, but overall for Survivor Series this year, I would give it, honestly, I'll give it a seven. It's a solid seven. Yes, there was some low, like low points of the night, but for the most part, solid seven. I like this uh, Survivor Series better than last year for sure so let me know how y'all felt about survivor series and nxt war games did y'all enjoy them which one you like better i think a lot of you guys are probably going to say war games but maybe some of y'all like uh survivor series better let me know which one did y'all like more was it survivor series or war games man and let's start a discussion down below but i appreciate y'all kicking it with me i'll see y'all on the next one peace Thank you.